Hello and welcome to Martin Maths. We're continuing the third of the Maths Foundation GCC May 2020 paper. And if you have a look at the other videos, question 1 to 10, and the second video I did was question 11 to 21, so this video will complete the uh, non-calculator paper from 2020. Okay, so we're going to start with question 22. And here we have diagrams of four graphs. Graph A, curving there and there. Graph B, curving down like that. Graph C, curving up like that. And graph D. Now hopefully we'll recognize this one as an x squared. This is a cubic. This is also a cubic, but it's negative. And this is the reciprocal. So let's match that to this table. So there is y equal to negative x cubed. That one was b. This is the positive cubic, so that'll be c. That's the quadratic, where it'll always be positive, so that's d. And then a is the reciprocal, where uh, it's asymptotic, um, as in it never touches the axis. Okay, so that's question 22. Let's move on to question 23. The diagram shows four triangles, <clears throat> and two of these are congruent, meaning the sides and angles are uh, the same. And we're going to write down the letter of those two angles. Only a one-mark question, but it does take a little bit of work. One thing to notice, triangle A, the 10 centimeters touches both those 55 and 45 degrees, and 10 does not touch that, so these two cannot be uh, congruent. Similarly, C, the 10 centimeters, is the other side of the 55, so cannot be congruent to that. Let's have a look at triangle D. Now, if I add those up, 45 and 80, that adds up to 125. And if I take that away from 180, I'm left with 55. So I know three angles of triangle, that's going to be 55 degrees. And if I look, I've got 10 centimeters there, 55 there, and 45 there. So it's exactly the same as A, just uh, rotate a little bit. So it is A and D. It's only one mark, but it took a little bit of uh, work and understanding uh, congruency in the sides and angles. Okay, question 24. Sean pays £10 for 24 chocolate bars. He sells all 24 chocolate bars for 50 pence each. Work out Sean's percentage profit. So you could work out the price per chocolate bar, but I'd rather work out the total. So I'm going to do 24 times 50 pence, which is half a pound, so 0 0.5. In fact, I might find it easier to do that as a fraction. 24 times a half is 12. So he's earned 12 pounds. So the difference there is 12 minus 10, how much he spent. So his profit is uh, what he earned minus his cost. He's earned, uh, he's earned two pounds profit. I've got to leave that as a percentage profit. So you have to take that difference out of the original. So two pounds divided by that original. So it's the uh, new minus the old over the old. Um, that is the uh, way of working out percentage profit. So two tenths, I'll turn this back into a decimal and then back into a percentage. So fraction, decimal, percentage. So the answer there is 20. Okay. Uh, moving on to question 25. We have a triangle here. There's 148 degrees there and 63 degrees there. AED, AED, and ABC are straight lines in this triangle, and these two are parallel, denoted by those arrow marks there. And EBC is 148, and ED. C is 63. We've got to work out EAB. So that means the angle centered at A there. So EAB. So we've got to work out that angle there. We must always give a reason. That's where lots of students do lose marks is by uh, not giving that reason. So I'm going to use angles on a straight line here. So one angles on the straight line, using a bit of shorthand, straight line ABC. 180 minus 148 gives me 32. So I know that ABE is 32. That's there. And 
and then um, corresponding angles um, in parallel lines, EB parallel to DC, uh, makes angle AE B equal to 63, because corresponding angles are equal. So that is also 63. Maybe you could have written that a little bit better, but um, that gives you the idea of what you'd need to say. You'd have to use angles on a straight line for that point and parallel lines there. Now we're into this triangle, AEB. So the third point is um, 180 degrees in a, in a triangle. So um, I could add 32 plus 63 to be 95 and do 180 minus 95 to give me 85, leaving EAB, which is what we've been asked for, EAB must be 85 degrees. Okay, so the important thing there was to make sure you're showing all the reasons. Um, angles on a straight line, parallel lines, and three angles in, in a triangle adding up to 180, but using all the pieces of information that have given us there. Okay, question 26. <clears throat> the table shows information about the heights in centimeters of a group of year nine girls. The least height, the minimum, is 150 centimeters, the median is 165, and the greatest height is 170. Now, that's a table, but for the boys, they've done a stem and leaf, so different uh, ways of representing the data or collecting the data. Um, and there are 15 uh, year nine boys. That's the stem, those are the leaves, and they've got a key here so that 15 slash 8 is 158. And we're going to compare the distributions of the girls with the boys. Things to do here are to compare one, the range, and two, the median. And if you compare those two, you will get all the points. So the range is the greatest minus the least. So the girls have a range of 170 minus 150, which is 20. The boys have a range of 182 minus 158 which is, um, that'll get us, 20 will get us, so 162, so 24. So we could say the boy's range of 24 is greater than the girl's range of 20. That should get you um, half the marks there. So comparing the range and the second, so that, that measures the spread of the data, and this uh, measures the center of the data. So the girl's median is 165. Girl's median of 165. We're going to compare that to the boys now that they're 15, and the middle of that will be um, 7 on either side of the eighth term. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's the eighth term, and just compare this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you know it's seven, um, and then that's the eighth, and then seven more gets you to 15, because it's n plus one over two gets you the median term. So 15 plus one is 16, divided by two is the eighth term. Happens to be an eight there, but that's just coincidence. It's 168. Um, so that is lower than the boy's median of 168 centimeters. Okay, so uh, three marks for taking two data points and comparing both the range and the median. Okay, that's a nice three mark question. Moving on to question 27. This is uh, compound measures here, because of pressure equal to force of air, and that's given to us. And they have a prism placed on the horizontal floor the prism has a height of 3, that's the height there, and the volume is 18 meters cubed. Now we know that volume is area times height, so we might need that in a second. The pressure on the floor due to the prism is 75 newtons. So the pressure is 75 newtons per meter squared. So we're going to have to find a way to combine these, 
because we've got to work out the force exerted. So we know that pressure equals force over area. That's given to us. I'm going to rearrange that because they want to find the force. So the force is pressure times area, and that's where we combine the two uh, formulae. I've got area there and area here. So I have to use this one to work out the area. So if the volume was 18, and I know that is area times the height, 18 is then equal to 3 times the area, because they told us the height is 3. Um, I've used a capital there, lowercase, um, it's the same one. <clears throat> um, so now the area is 18 divided by 3, which is 6. I'm now going to put that into this formula. Um, or oh, this formula here. Formula is force equal to 75 times that 6. So the force is equal to, um, again, it's a non calculated paper. I know 275 is 150. And then 2 times 3 is 6, so it'll be 450. So 450 newtons there. Okay, um, you may be able to do that in fewer steps, but that's um, how I work it out using uh, that volume and that uh, pressure uh, compound measures formula. Okay, so that's uh, three marks there. Right, uh, question 29, we have A, equal, A over B equal to two-fifths and B over C equal to three-quarters. We're going to turn those relationships into a common ratio. So what you can do here, A over B is two-fifths and B over C is three-quarters. You can turn that into A to B is the same as two to five and B to C is the same as 3 to 4. So I can nearly, I can see that I just need to combine them at the point of B, that A to B to C. So I've got 2 to 5 and a relationship of 3 to 4. So I need to find some common multiple of 5 and 3 so I can make those numbers bigger as well. So 5 and 3 both go into 15. I've multiplied the 3 by 5, so I multiply the 4 by 5. Multiply the 5 by 3, so multiply the 2 by 3, and I get 6. So there I have A to B to C is 6 to 15 to 20. There's a slightly different way of doing this, which is fractions. Um, so if A over B is 2 fifths, then A is equal to 2B over 5, um, and B over C is 3 quarters, then B is equal to 3C over 4, I'm going to substitute that into here. So A is equal to 2 fifths times 3 quarters C. So it's equal to, um, cancel that, 3 tenths C. So then I have A equals 2B over 5, which equals 3 tenths of a C. Multiply through by 10. So 10 of A is the same as uh, 2 of b, which is the same as, sorry, uh, 4 of b, so multiply it by 10, uh, 4 of b, same as 3 of c. So now you've got to find some number for uh, that that'll make them all equal. So 10 of something, same as 4 of something, same as 3 of something. And if you think of common multiple for 10, 4, and 3, and you know time, it's 60, so um, 10 lots of 6 would make 60, 4 lots of 15 would make 60, and 3 lots of 20. So it's going to be 6 to 15 to um, 20 there, which is the same as you get there. This is a quicker way, but this is a different way to understand it using fractions. Okay, um, nearly at the end of this paper. Last question here. Oh, I've skipped 28. I'll go back to it in a second. Um, make Q the subject of this one. So I have 6Q plus 7. So I'm going to subtract 7 on both sides. Minus 7 there, minus 7 there. Those will fall away. So 6Q equal to P minus 7. Then I divide through by 6. So I'm going to divide through by 6. Divide through by 6. So P 
Q will equal P minus 7 all over 6. Okay, um, index laws here, m to minus 2 raised to the power of minus 3. When you raise a power to another power, you multiply them, so it's minus 2 times minus 3. Negative times a negative, it's going to be positive, so it's m to the 6. It's just one mark, but it's knowing the power law there. So that's m to the 6 there. Okay, it says your total for paper is 80 marks, so you know that statement says you come to the end of the paper. Do watch the other two videos uh, if you want to go back earlier questions. One thing to do when you finish the paper, always go back and check your answers. And in this case, I'd go back and I'd notice that I'd skipped question 28. So let's do 28 now. And we've got to write these numbers in order of size, starting with the smallest number. Now this one is in standard form. It's 6.72 times 10 to the 5. That's not in standard form. 67.2 is 6.72 times 10 times 10 to the minus 4, so 6.72 times 10 to the minus 3. Then that's 672, which is 6.72 times 10 squared times 10 to the 4. So that's 6.72 times 10 to the 6. And this one here, I can see that I've moved the decimal place 1, 2, 3, 4. So 6.72 times 10 to the minus 4. So the smallest number in that case would be that one. So it would be 0 0.000672. The next smallest is the other negative, which is now 6.72 times 10 to the minus 3. But to order them, let's write them as they were originally there. 67, sorry, 0 0.2 times 10 to the minus 4. Then this one here, which was in standard form, 6.72 times 10 to the 5. And then finally... 672 times uh, 10 to the 4. Okay, and there we have finally finished that paper. All right, that's Mountain Maths. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and good luck for your maths.